Good afternoon crafters, my name is Hannah Roxbury and I am the brand ambassador for Carnation Crafts and this afternoon we are bringing you a live demonstration featuring the Into Spring Dye Collection. So for anyone that has new to one of our Facebook Live demos, these are basically an opportunity for you guys to ask your questions, interact, and we go through step-by-step -step a card tutorial because when we're on air with Create and Craft, we don't always get the time to go through it in detail as we would like. So if you do have any questions as we go along, please do feel free to type them up in the comments. Um, what we always do with Facebook Lives is give it a little while just so everyone who wants to join us live can find us and do so. We always do our Facebook Lives on our brand page, Carnation Crafts. Um, and then we upload the videos afterwards. So they are available to watch back at any time. Um, so we'll give it a little while. Let's just see if we've got anyone joining us so far. Yeah, a couple of people. Uh, good afternoon, Soph. Uh, Suzanne says, hi, Hannah and all the crafters out there. Been making Christmas cards. Oh, fantastic, Suzanne. It's always nice to hear of people getting ahead. Honestly, mine are not even a thought yet. <laughs> I am so behind this year. We've got time. It's fine. Do you know what? And we've got lovely collections from Carnation Crafts for our Christmas cards so we can get ahead. Um, I'm not panicking just yet. We still have time to get the Christmas cards done. Amanda's here as well. Hi, Amanda. Anne's here as well from sunny Spain. Oh, thank you, Anne, for joining us from, from sunny Spain. Do you know what? It's not, do you know, it's not actually too bad today. It's quite nice, which is, it does make a difference. So this afternoon's Facebook Live, as we've mentioned, is into spring. And you might think, OK, that's a bit of a strange time of year to be doing into spring, Hannah. But we have had loads of queries on how the into spring card shape works. So I thought it would be worth hopping on and doing a little demo with that. Um, I think we'll get straight into it. If anyone does have any questions, by all means, do type them up and I'll do my best to answer as we go. Uh, Margaret says here it keeps breaking up. Margaret, I can only apologise and blame my internet collection hopefully it's okay for most people out there um hopefully it, it will it will stay connected trace says see another one here look hi hannah i'm making christmas cards i feel really behind <laughs> you're supposed to be making me feel that it's okay that i haven't done my christmas cards yet guys <laughs> tracy's also joined us from sunny glen ross in scotland oh fantastic um Terry says it is cool, quite cool here today. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully, hopefully I'll send some sunshine up your way, Terry, as well. Okay, so we're going to get into it. Let me change the camera around so you can see. Here we go. Look at all those lovely, lovely die cuts all ready to go. So the interspring card shape is this die set here. It's a lovely shape. And of course, you've got all of that beautiful filigree all through the die as well. Let me just take this out of the packet and you can see, I put my storage to one side. Just a note on all Carnation Crafts and dies, our storage comes as standard, so it keeps your dies all nice and safe. So this is your interspring card shape. If you're familiar with Carnation Crafts, you will know we try and bring you a card base with each and every single one of our collections. This one is lovely. This is really, really pretty design. Let me just take the largest most die out of the packaging lifting it away from the sticky behind and you see you have this and you might think goodness me that that looks a bit complicated to start with it will part one pass cut it will then score and create your fold lines as well for essentially what is a z fold card shape with a little bit of a fancy twist to it then within the die itself you have your mats and layers so your framing devices that you can cut from different colored cards and then your filigree as well and this is a really pretty intricate filigree included as well we have these little nested dies here so brilliant for your sentiments and things like that this little beauty here with the perforation line across is like a little hinge so if you did want to use either your larger filigree panel or your nested dies um sort of here as embellishments as well, you can make a little folding door. So these little perforated ones work as a little hinge. You've then got additional sort of ovals and things like that, the tags as well, which is really, really pretty. Um, oh, we've suddenly got an absolute influx of people. So hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, just having a little scroll back here. I don't know whether it was just taking a while for my comments to kick in. At Patricia's here um, and also Elaine. From cloudy Birmingham. Um, Diane is joining us from a lovely sunny day in London. 
Jordan. So it seems to be sort of mixed, mixed bag weather-wise along with everything. Uh, Natalie says, I'm making autumn cards just because I love the new collection. Oh, Natalie, yes, that will be colour of autumn. And actually, if you have a little look at my Instagram feed. I'm Hannah Roxbury on Instagram. Um, I've just uploaded a little sneak peek of something to come, which may feature one of the dyes from the Colour of Autumn collection as well. Uh, Humberta, there we go. I can always count on Humberta. She says, I haven't even thought about Christmas cards yet. <laughs> Thank you, Humberta. Ida's here as well from Florida and Jacqueline's here from Colorado, USA. Thanks, guys, for joining us from over the pond. Um, oh, Sandra says, good afternoon, Hannah. I'm watching from my sick bed as I have this super cold flu bug um, on day six and it's not going away. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. She says this will cheer me up. Hopefully it does um, and that you feel much, much better soon. I know an awful lot of it is going around. Um Carol says, you're not on your own. I haven't started my Christmas cards yet. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, Nicola says, will you be at Peterborough? I want to get the square Z fold. And by the looks of this one, I may have to get it. Uh, no, Nicola, we won't be attending Crafting Live in Peterborough. Um, but we have got some uh, fun Facebook Lives um, on the Sunday instead um, on that score. Oh, Suzanne's just a message for an update. I'm selling my Christmas cards in my best friend's salon, so don't worry, Hannah. <laughs> okay, now I know why you're getting ahead. That's perfect. Okay, so we will be playing with Interspring. And a lot of people have asked how this card shape works, okay? So I thought it'd be really, really great to go through in detail a demonstration. So what we need to do, as with all of our dies, uh, card shape wise, we're going to create that base first. And the base is always created from the largest die in the card shape pack. In this case, here we go. You'll see you've got all of your cut lines all the way around and then you have your score lines included as well. What we're going to do is we're going to cut that from a nice heavyweight cardstock. This is 350 uh, GSM Perfect Smooth. And when it cuts, it will cut like so. Actually, that is that is false. This is, I've changed it up slightly. Um, it's because I'm used to it, always doing everything in 350. This is actually 300 GSM um, color crave. So it's the same as our um, Perfect Papers. So it's got that light, nice sheen finish to it, um, but it's still a nice heavyweight for the design. So as long as it's a heavyweight cardstock, you can create your card bases. So as you can see, it will cut obviously your card base out and then it will cut the cut lines as well. You then have score lines already scored in place by the die. Little top tip. What you can do, flip the card base over and score with a ball tool along those little lines just to give them extra depth to your score, okay? What we can then do essentially is take this side of the Z fold and fold it over this side to create your Z fold card shape. So all you're doing is teasing those score lines into a mountain, a valley and a mountain and a valley and a mountain, okay? Then taking this side over the other side to create essentially your Z fold, your fancy Z fold for the interspring card shape. What I would also recommend on the reverse, take a bone folder, once you've folded it into place and then just really score down on those score lines, okay? Both sides, just running your bone folder over and that creates a nice sharp score, a nice neat score, so everything will then sit flat without sort of popping out in your envelope. That then gives you a nice movement for your card base. So hopefully that clears up any queries on how we then cut and fold that card base. It's just literally as simple as taking the right hand side of the card base, the largest side of the card base and folding it over. Naturally where the score lines are, it will naturally fold as you push that card over, okay? Onto this, again, same as many, 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 many demonstrations we do we can then start building our mats and layers. So for the dies, we can cut them 
Uh, it's going down in size from the largest size down to the smaller size and working down in colour because it draws the eye in. Obviously, if you want to, you can mess around with colour play and things like that and introduce different ways of doing this. But for me, I tend to stick traditionally to working down in size of matte and down in tone of colour. So the coloured cardstock I'm using here is our Into Spring um, Perfect Papers, so designed to match the collection exactly. And along the back, I've put some finger lift tape just in areas to hold this matte layer down. I folded over the carrier sheet. Again, you've seen me do this many times. And then we can just slide that into place, just making sure it's all aligned nicely. And then we can tease away the tape, carrier sheet. And once that's all stuck down, we can just smooth it over with our fingers. Okay, so we're adding our mats and layers. Beautiful, beautiful sage green colour on this. Similarly, the other side, and you'll see the mats and layers just fit perfectly. It just works all together as a card base. That little side there, and again, we're using finger lift tape. So again, just folding the carrier sheet of the finger lift tape over to the edge to create a tab, like so. And then aligning on our card base like so before we peel away and then smooth that cardstock down. <laughs> oh, Miss Bagshaw has just uh, just arrived. She says, Auntie Hannah, sorry for the tardiness, was on with the boss. Oh, work dad Mark must have been on the phone to Miss Carla Bagshaw. So um, hope, I hope work dad's okay, Carla. <laughs> All that you have been behaving yourself, which is probably highly unlikely if work dads had been on the phone to you. <laughs> Karen says, sorry I'm late, I've just had my COVID booster. I hope you are all keeping well. Ah, Karen, do not worry. Do not ever worry about being late to these Facebook Lives. They are purely just a little chance to have a catch up and a chat as we demonstrate. And of course, we will always, always, always um, upload them to both our Facebook page and also, do you know what? I don't know whether I've ever mentioned this on our Facebook Live before. Um, we have our... Um, YouTube channel as well. So yeah, they'll be on, on the YouTube channel too. Oh goodness me, Hannah, I could have, could have done with sticking that a little bit more straight, but hopefully you guys get the idea. Never mind. <laughs> I have a little bit of a, a wonky day today, but it won't matter. We'll cover most of that wonkiness up with, um, with the die cuts from the collection. So again, just working down in size, just adding in the next map and layer, same as we've just seen with the finger lift tape, just adjusting that and turning that until we get the right orientation to align. Take a little bit more time that I'm taking and sticking that in place, like so. Now, the filigree layer on this, let me just bring the die in again, because I think it's easier to show on the die. The filigree layer is actually like so. It doesn't have a cutting edge, which is great because if you want to create something more of a lattice work or a lacy look to your design, you can actually cut this filigree directly into the card base. This little um, beauty here, where it's just sort of the rectangle, great because you can actually include that on other card designs as well. And then the shaped one is shaped so it fits the Z fold perfectly. What I've done is cut the filigree and then included the outer cutting edge that matte layer which is a separate die set included that as well okay when it comes to sticking that down it will then fit that lighter green layer that we place down first okay and so you get the lighter green coming through and then the darker green as your border and i think that looks really really pretty Onto this, we're going to stick this using a little bit of glue. Oh, let me just grab that out of my bag. Um, I'm going to be using uh, Pinflare book binding glue, white glue, if it's going to allow me, because I haven't actually unpacked from my demos the other day, which is very naughty. I've been working out my case. Normally I get home from a show and it's a bit of a ritual. I then literally um, unpack everything, pack all the show boxes away, neaten everything up, tidy everything up. But you know what? I've just left everything in my tote bag, which I'm going to regret because I'm on air again on, uh, when is it? Thursday. Thursday with Christmas stamps. And it's all going to be a mad panic to try and get the um, 
dice swapped over and the and the demos swapped over and the show boxes swapped over. So maybe I will actually unpack and repack this afternoon after this Facebook Live. So for this little filigree layer, what I'm using is Pinflare uh, bookbinding glue and one of our glue applicators. Now, the reason I like to use a glue applicator is because I can get into all the little fine areas and just place the glue specifically. OK, so just into all these little lacy detail bits. That way, when I come to stick down, I'm not going to have glue sort of squidging over the edge. Everything's going to be nice and neat, one would hope. Anywhere where I put a little bit extra glue, we can just go in and smooth with the applicator. Just so when we come to stick, you don't get that squidge of glue out the side. There we go. So I'm just, just adjusting that into place and then holding that down so the glue takes. <laughs> Carla says, work dad, um, he owes me a bottle of Grey Goose. He lost a bet and he's now reneging. But she who laughs, laughs, laughs longest. Well, that's a bit of a tongue twister. I look forward to the update on that, on what Mr. Mark is reneging on. And since we've called him out on a Facebook Live, I'm sure he'll have to back down. <laughs> and actually rescind on the vet there. Uh, Catherine. Oh, thank you, Catherine. That's really sweet. Catherine's just complimenting the tutorials. Um, ah, she says she's going to get her, her collection out afterwards and have a go that's fantastic well do you know what it's absolutely my pleasure to sit and do these tutorials because it's a little bit of fun it's fun for me as well to interact with you guys same with the other side just repeating that same process glue applicator with our pin flare book binding glue um the book binding glue is great for actually this kind of cardstock um the cardstock itself uh, has a little bit of silky sheen to it um which means, you know, when you put your glue on there, you, you don't want it sliding about. You want the glue that's going to grab and hold that really, really, really well. And I find the um, the bookbinding glue is really, really good for that. Um, basically for gluing anything to anything paper craft wise. Um, but of course, you can use your, your glue of choice, your glue of preference as well. So just smoothing those little dobs of glue all the way around. Just like so. And then sticking that batch of filigree to that base as well. The reason why I've gone sort of green tones with this, there's three different colour greens within the Interspring collection. I just wanted a base. I wanted something that's going to be a, a backdrop um, to really highlight when we start introducing the vignettes rather than detracting at all from that. And I just felt that was a really pretty... Backdrop. It reminds me a little bit of um, William Morris, the, the patterning within this and the colour tones. It's quite a heritage colour tone within these greens as well, which is very, very pretty. OK, so that's created our base. Now onto this, you can absolutely craft with any one of your collections uh, from Carnation or indeed any craft designs you want to work with. Um, I've seen some really lovely um, Christmas cards and things like that within this design for group. I think that lace work really works beautifully uh, with a nice sort of traditional Christmas card effect. So don't ever feel like just because you're working with something called spring, that it has to be for springtime only. Most of our die sets will work across the seasons. OK, so we're going to have a play. I've not actually decided how we're going to do this yet, but I've got the die cuts ready. So we've got the different various uh, florals from Interspring. We've got some of the pebbles. We've got the splash. We've got the clouds, grasses, all sorts of things just to have a little bit of a play. Now, things like these lovely long line daffodils, these lovely crocuses and lily valleys, beautiful bluebells there. These are all designed so you could absolutely use them on a large card base, perhaps like a 7x7 seven seven or an 8x8 eight eight, for example. However, being Carnation Crafts, you don't have to just stick with um, one particular die cut choice. You can snip into these and use just sections and segments of these. So I think I'm going to, what kind of combination am I going to go with? Daffodils for sure, because I love the yellow. And do you know what? We might just do all of them. Let's have a snip. Let's start snipping into these and seeing where we get to. So I'm going to snip away 
the largest area of the the bluebells there which is just gorgeous i've already obviously cut these um and decoupaged them up so the flower heads do come with extra little details uh daffodils and the snowdrops let's just release that there and also there so we're just kind of trimming these down into uh, bite-sized pieces that we can layer up and create almost like a little bit of a nice spring flower meadow going on maybe i think that would be a really nice way of working with them now because obviously in nature everything would overlap naturally it's quite fun to have a little play around with how these layer you see by adding you're building that look you're taking it away from just being sort of a plain backdrop into something that perhaps you've discovered on your little walk through the woodlands you've come across this lovely section of detailing as well i would like to include the crocuses on the front as well so i'm going to trim into these and all i'm doing is taking my scissors and following the cut line details that are already in place to trim away sections of these flowers and this actually makes it a really really versatile dye because you've got almost like lots and lots and lots and lots of different flowers there just for the price of one basically like let's just release those from that side as well and then anywhere where you've kind of got these these leaves coming over that don't make sense if you've snipped it down if you've cropped the image if you like that's probably the best way to look at it you can then just go in and take those leaves out just by trimming them. Here, we can just trim that piece of sort of leaf down. Oops, and remove that section. And anything we trim through, we then round off. So now it looks like this was a die cut in its own right, okay? Uh, same here, let's just trim those bits away as well. And let's just round off that little leaf there as well. So you see when I'm rounding, I tend to move the die cut across the scissors rather than trying to move the scissors themselves. Let's just get the little bits that I've cut away. And again, just adding in your layers. Something I kind of feel I've gained a little bit more confidence with is this layering process. I think sometimes I was afraid to layer too much onto a card and overload it, but really when we're working with die cuts like these, they look so pretty as a backdrop just with the layering. You've got the different colours there as well, which just speak volumes. Um, oh, Vera says, I'm late trying to watch while on babysitting duties. Got my two-year-old grandson here until tomorrow. I love it. Oh, Vera, that's really lovely. That's really, really sweet. Um, I hope he's keeping well and obviously keeping you busy as well. <laughs> Bless him. <laughs> okay, so anything we've done on what essentially is going to be the front of the card, I want to do a little nod to on the other side. But again, just a little nod, not too much because I don't want to overwhelm. So I think maybe those daffodils are actually going to sit beautifully on that side. And it's possible we're bringing a few of the little bluebells on the front, maybe the little crocus as well from there but nothing to overload the card too much so again we're going to snip now you notice i've not actually um stuck anything yet because i'm just having a little play we're just figuring out where we're going with things and what we're doing with things until we commit to sticking fully so just trim those down let's then take those off there so we're just kind of thinking about uh, the space we're working in and how that then relates to the rest of the design. So just trimming those through like so. <laughs> Sue Oxberry has just joined and says, hello, Hannah. <laughs> At least I didn't get Hannah, Hannah Claire because that would mean I'm in trouble for anyone that um, perhaps didn't realise that is my mum joining us. I always feel like, oh my goodness, my mum's watching. I have to behave myself. But normally I do. It's only when Carla gets involved. <laughs> it's when things try, tend to go a little bit awry. Right. Daffodils on the other side. So you see how we just need to then just test the little fold back. We don't want it catching on the daffodils. So it might be that we trim that down further. Or we might just leave it sort of, sort of lounging over the edge there. That's actually quite, quite fun. 
just making sure we haven't got anything interrupting that little score line there. Let's now take a couple of the bluebells as well, just a little tiny bit, cut into these, just so we've got the nod to the other flowers on this side as well. And slipping in to release. And again, just neatening up. Actually, I'm going to take that little tiny bit of grass, if you like, away from there as well. <laughs> Rude, true, but rude. Well, you know, you know it's always you that gets me into trouble with things. Okay, so crocuses as well. Is it crocuses or is it cro croci or... Cro uh, mm, that just fried my brain a little bit. I can't think. Crocuses. I don't know. I really don't know on that. Okay, so two little flowers. Again, just with that little nod. So when we come to layer you see how we've now got just a little nod to the flowers on the other side as well which is just a little bit of fun okay now the rest of the flowers i might come back to these i might add them more in later but for the minute they're going to go to one side just like so oh i've put that in glue oh it's going to be one of those messy facebook lives never mind it will be okay it will be fine now onto this lovely sort of springtime effect we've got going on um we are going to add our grounding devices and our characters and things like that so if we add in things like the pebbles do you see how instantly you get a placement you get a sense of that is the ground where the the flowers are growing from and of course you know we can repeat that on the other side as well one of the smaller pebbles it just places it rather than having it loose like that which is fine if you want it like that that's no problem but by introducing a grounding device you're making sense of the story that then means our precious little chick has somewhere to stand has somewhere whereby it puts everything in perspective okay we've also got little um other die cuts from this particular collection into spring and I thought it might be fun just to include maybe the clouds above the top just again extending over the edge um, and also I do love this this grass this sort of new shoots designs so that might go behind the daffodils there as well just to give you a little bit more height on that side I like that that gives you more full look lush greenness as well once we're happy with the design layout I'm still looking at that daffodil. I think I'm going to have to cut that down just a little bit so we're not interrupting that edge. There we go. That's going to sit better there. Let's just trim that little stalk down as well. Because you know what I'm like? I have a tendency to get carried away with things. That's got a little bit more clearance there. Okay. Once I'm happy with my placement, I'm going to start then committing to the stick and gluing these things down what you can always do if you are um coming up with ideas and things like that it is worth taking a little photograph as you go so you've got a reference point you've got somewhere where you can come back and check things too now you'll notice with the um, die cuts and things traditionally the bluebells do come across that way but there's nothing stopping you twisting and turning the heads of the bluebells and then having them pointing in the other direction. We're going to hide that little bit with that daffodil. OK, so you're not going to see where it's coming across. But because we're working with what we call our mirrored vignettes, you have got the choice. You see, the background of this die cut is just as beautifully um, coloured as what the foreground is. That means you have a choice on whereabouts you come to stick. Now I'm going to just scoop a little bit of that glue off because that will end up on the background. We don't want to stick anywhere where it's going to be overlapping on the card base. Okay, we want that all free and open so you're not interrupting that sort of hinge design. So I'm going to stick that there. And then just come in and glue, whip in flare glue gel, that sort of head of the flower, if you like, to the rest of the stalk. Okay, so you see how we're leaving that area there, which is on the open bit, unstuck. Same with the daffodil. That's going to come in and then sit over the bluebells, as we decided. 
Now, the reason why I'm using Pin Flare Glue Gel is because it gives us a little bit of wiggle room. It's a nice dimensional glue, three-dimensional silicon gel glue, um, which means when it dries, it dries clear, but it will also keep its height. So if we're adding in layers like we are here, it will dry just lifted, okay, from the base. Now you can absolutely use foam pads if you prefer. A lot of it is personal preference. I do find glue gel a little bit easier to work with because you've got time, as I say, to play with these things. Crocuses going down at the front. Now I know that's all gonna sit on top of the bluebell, so we can go in with a little bit more pin flare. And then just tease up the daffodils, snowdrops even, from the daffodil set and stick those behind. So you're building up this lovely layered look to your flowers. I'm just gonna add a little bit of pin flare underneath those snowdrops to keep those in place, like so, okay? Now, obviously, if you are working with uh, pin flare, the biggest uh, three-dimensional glue gel, the biggest difference is you will need to leave this for a good, I don't know, 24 hours to make sure the glue is nice and dry before you try and, um, so, you know, send it in the post or put it in an envelope or anything like that. Humberta says, just add a butterfly hand, covers all mistakes. <laughs> Absolutely, we do love a butterfly. It's the crafter's, crafter's Bible, isn't it? Add in a butterfly and it will cover all mistakes. Um, where that blue belt then reaches the other side, I'm going to just add in a tiny little bit of pin flare, just so it's got a little bit of an anchor point on there as well. Nothing too dramatic, but just somewhere where it can sit. Now, clouds, I mentioned those earlier. I'm not going to cover up all of the filigree. I'm just going to add in sort of the clouds just again as placement, as something that just adds to the storytelling aspect. I'm going to have them overhanging the card shape. Obviously, if I was intending to put this in an envelope, I'd have to um, consider where I'm placing my dies if I've got any overhangs and things like that. Um, but for the most part, I tend to give my cards um, in person or um, with a, a gift box, something like that. So it does get around that kind of query of how do we add these into an envelope. Clouds along the top, I love these laden clouds, they look just just like you're going to have a downpour, you know in spring when it's really 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 lovely and you get that absolute cloud burst and the heavens open and it just washes everything away and that smell, that really lovely rain smell when it's, it's warming up and things like that, absolutely one of my favourite smell time smells ever. <laughs> Leslie says, you and Carla are absolutely the best. Love you both. Um, oh, guys, that's really kind. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> great at demos, but your personalities are brilliant. So entertaining to watch. Uh, love baby Ruben. He's such a handsome little laddie. Thank you, Leslie. That's really, really sweet. Yes. Um, do you know, it's really funny. Actually, I haven't shared it yet, but um, in my, you know, on Facebook, it gives you your memories. Um, today, there's a picture of uh, Carla and I mucking, I say mucking around mucking around in the green room taking selfies um, and that was two years ago today which just made me smile because I looked at that photo and I thought you know what we have been through so much together that that crazy crazy woman and I and it's just such a pleasure to to work with her as a colleague as well now which is just just fabulous it's so nice being able to work with one of your best friends Okay, so we've popped our little pebbles on and you see how instantly that gives you ground. So you've got your clouds in the sky and then you've got your pebbles along along the floor as well. Floor? Ground. Um, and we're going to then add in this chick. But before we add him, we want to give him a little bit of shape and a little bit of dimension. So I'm using a dense foam mat and I'm using my ball tools. Now, these are just generic ball tools, generic foam mat um, available on, on the internet. I think I got mine from... Actually... I got these from Carla. Carla gave me these. Um, but again, readily readily available online. So we're starting with the largest ball tool and we're just rounding off areas on that little chick, okay? Rather than sticking anything flat, it is so nice to give these things dimension. And then we're moving down in size. So areas where they would be more prominent, like this little wing and of course his little head, we can then go in and shape those further. It's just pulling the paper up and giving it a lot more sculpted design. Um, Chris says, what collection is this please? Chris, we are working with the Into Spring die collection. Um, 
various elements from that. We've seen the the spring card shape. We've seen obviously the little uh, chick here, the spring wildlife um, set that this chick comes from. It's actually on dealer day today. So if you haven't got this one and you love the look of the little chicks and things, um, let me just grab the die set so you can actually see. So I'm working with the little chick that's great gazing upwards there, but it comes with this happy little chappy as well. So a little plump chick, little fluffy yellow chick, um, our little bunny rabbit, and of course our little fawn as well with his, his great big ears and his beautiful doe eyes. This is the Spring Wildlife Collection. Um, and it is Deal of the Day. So if you're not familiar with Deal of the Day, Carnation Crafts do every single day a different deal, as the name would suggest, funny enough. Um, 24 hours only. And it just means you can get, you know, introduce you to things as something a little bit different. Sometimes we do different vignettes. Sometimes we do offers on dies. But it's well worth checking them out. Now, I was just using a little bit of um, hand gel there because I've managed to get myself absolutely covered in uh, glue gel and glue and things like that. So uh, hand sanitizer is a great, great way to just remove the sticky from your hands really quickly. Okay, so right in with the smallest little ball tool there on the eye to shape that out also. And then we can move my mat away. And there we have, do you see how now you've got that lovely rounded look and that plumage on that little chick is just the gorgeous, most gorgeousness thing. I'm then just going to tease back the head so he's sitting nice and comfortably and he's going to sit on my pebbles there. So yes, he's going to cover up some of the flowers there, but that's how it would be in real life, isn't it? You're going to have backdrops to flowers and things like that. So I'm going to load up my pin flare glue gel on that little wing and also on that little head, which means when we come to stick, it's going to create that shape and continue to keep that volume within the die cut itself okay so I'm sticking that to the the die cuts underneath I'm not pushing it down too hard because remember I don't want any glue going into that middle bit there um Leslie says I believe that's called oh I can't pronounce it Petro Riker oh my goodness me that just sounds like someone out of Star Trek <laughs> when the rain has fallen that smell comes up when it's warm I love it, it reminds me of childhood Leslie yes if only I could pronounce it you would be spot on there okay the florals on the other side now quickly I think let's just give that a little bit of shape as well so another way to shape your die cuts is to take your pokey tool and your thumb and run the die cuts over the pokey tool and that gives you a lovely curved feel to the designs and things like that. Great for leaves, um, great for adding in dimension to leaves and grasses and things like that. Nice little twist and turn. And again, instantly you're giving it more of a lifelike appearance. That little beauty, new shoots, is gonna go ooh, with a little bit of pin flare on this side. So what I'm doing by adding in this particular die cut on this side is just lengthening that edge. Because we've got a lot of height and a lot of bulk on one side, you want to then add in elements that are going to balance that out. So this little grass here is perfect for adding in more depth um, without adding too much uh, weight to your designs, okay? Same with the daffodils, in they go. A little bit of pin flare, just wherever they are going to be stuck to the background. And we're going to line those up i'm glad i snipped that other one away so now this little area is free and we're going to go in with the tiny little bits that i cut away from the crocus and the bluebells like so one little crocus just poking over the edge there and one little bluebell same thing again a little bit of pin flare Actually, I'm going to go in with my tweezers, giving a little bit of fingers and thumbs, switch over to that. Do I want that? I'm going to swap that around just so the bluebell is underneath the crocus, just because the crocus has a little bit finer leaves. That way they're not sort of fighting with each other. It doesn't matter then if the leaves overlap on the bluebell because the leaves are finer on the crocus. There. And we're going to go in with a 
pebble as well just again so we're matching the sides up but I'm using the smaller pebble because you've got different size pebbles or lengths of pebbles within that pack of dies just like so that's looking so cute now what I could do is I could add more flowers if I wanted to I'm not sure that I'm going to just because I think I'm happy with how many flowers we've got but I do feel like I want to add a little bit of a splash maybe behind our little chick it's almost like to allude to the fact that it's perhaps raining a little bit and he's out um, on his little rock there so it might be that I snip these away and perhaps add just a few splashes behind and again you see me offering that up I've got the option I can go in either ways with my mirrored vignettes because it's something I'm going to use in the background I'm not too worried about them balling these off so they don't have that um, sort of flatter look to them but I'm going to slip down the middle and then introduce this behind oops my little chick like so again great just adding texture few little splashes not detracting just added in and then what we could do is coming down from the clouds, we could cut away some of the little splashes and treat them more like raindrops. So you're tying areas of the clouds of the design together. So let's go in and just release some of the smaller areas of splashes from, oh, I've lost that one. Come back, you. Come back. <laughs> It's amazing how far these things ping. Um, it just reminds me of a really funny story, actually. Um, talking about sort of snipping into things and, and how far things ping. Um, for those of you that may not be aware, I actually started life, my, my working life, um, as a jeweller. So I am a gemologist by trade and a, a silversmith as well. And I never forget one of the worst moments of my life was sitting in my diamond grading exam in a very, very, very quiet. You know how exams halls are? Absolutely silent, aren't they? Very, very, very quiet exam hall with um, diamonds to grade in front of me. And I picked them up in my tweezers. So I have a, I have a fear of tweezers, hence why I use these, um, these ones that self-lock. And it pinged. <laughs> so this diamond went ping across the room and honest to goodness whenever that happens uh, within a, a jewellery exam obviously the invigilators stop the exam and then you have to find the diamond before you can carry on <laughs> oh my goodness the 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 chaos the fear the, you know that, that awful feeling that sinking feeling you get inside and you just think Oh dearie me, this is gonna be this is gonna be a mission and a half. Luckily, luckily it was found and I did did carry on with the exam and go on to pass. But I just felt so sorry for all the other students as well because my goodness me, you get sort of hyped up, don't you? Ready to get into the exam, to do your thing, and yeah, something like that can really throw you off. So apologies to anyone who's watching and, and took that exam with me. I, I am very, very sorry for pinging that diamond across the room. I'm sure it wasn't just me back in the day. I'm sure lots and lots of people did end up pinging those sort of things. Okay, so last little raindrop going in there. Just as we've done before, if you've seen me do so many times, just trimming down where we've cut those raindrops away. I'm using my um, tweezers to hold the raindrop itself because uh, it, just, it just means your fingers aren't in the way when you're trying to add in the drops and things. And it means when we add the glue... And stick you can then create the look of the rain and actually it's just a really lovely way of tying in you're taking die cuts and using them in a different way just those few little drops you know and just as the rain starting as funnily enough it has just started here um you get those first few specks and you always have that conversation is it raining did you feel rain is it just me it's that sort of thing and then you've got the little tie-in behind the little chick there where you've got the rest of the raindrops there too that has created, hopefully,
hopefully you'll agree, a little bit of a fun spring theme card. Perhaps it's for an animal lover. Perhaps it's something um, like a just because or sorry you're feeling under the weather, you know, with you've got the, the rain and things like that. Well, that would be a nice card to send to someone who's feeling a little bit poorly to cheer them up as well. So again, don't think just because we've called it a spring collection, it is just for that. Um, that's oh i've seen a couple of people saying we've frozen hopefully we haven't frozen for everyone um and again we will be able to re you know repost this later so you guys can watch back at any time leslie says that must have been so embarrassing how yeah oh my goodness it really really was <laughs> okay so there we have our in spring card shape let me flip the camera around and i can show you from the front then as well there we go let me move that so it's a bit of a bit more clearer so there we've got the z fold card design now of course the elements that i've layered up on here you don't necessarily have to replicate that just on the z fold that sort of design where you've got the layering of the flowers the little chick on the rocks the raindrops coming down from the clouds that's actually a really nice way to use the dies on an eight by eight or a seven by seven so really do think about taking elements from these um tutorials these little card demonstrations and replicating them for yourself, fitting them into how you like to craft as well. Really great way of doing it. So that's just how we create um, one of the Interspring card designs. I would love to see your versions of this. So please do consider if you do make something similar, pop it or, or anything you make really, I love to see it. Uh, pop it on our group, Carnation Crafters, tag me in it as well, because I always, always love to see. I've seen um, quite a few of the uh, ones from last week, the new arrivals, um, things like we've done from the fairy tale day and things like that it'd be really really lovely to see um thanks guys for your kind comments that's really sweet thank you um leslie says where would you put a verse on this card please hannah well do you know what sometimes with this kind of design i wouldn't necessarily always have to include a verse but if you wanted to put your to's and from's you've got plenty of space on the back of the card to do so or you remember we had that little um let me just put the card down before i drop it you have got that option in this card design um of using the little hinge here and then this one is your little no other side hannah back to front cameras as a door, you could have that, rather than having the space open in the middle, you could have that as your little verse panel if you wanted to. So you do have options with that, Leslie. And um, thanks guys for your kind comments. Now, I don't know how much I'm allowed, do you know what, I'm gonna say it anyway. So <laughs> we've got our next Facebook Live is really exciting. It is a whole day of Facebook Lives on Sunday. So we will be having Facebook Lives at nine and at one and at five o'clock in the evening. So hopefully it will cover most, if not all time zones. So people that want to like watch live can do so. And it's gonna be our spooky spectacular. Now I know we've had lots and lots of people asking in group about the spooky spectacular. It's going to be a day of Facebook Lives with dice sets that have already been released but with an updated spooky vignette. So we've got we've got elements in there from Tranquil Times. We've got elements in there from um, Misty Morning. We have elements in there from Fairy Tale Day as well. And one from uh, Colour of Autumn too. So it's updated vignettes. Hopefully a lot of you guys at home will already have some of the dies, if not all of the dies. And we will be taking you through three different card demonstrations, three, three different card demonstrations on Sunday, um, all with various designs featuring these brand new Halloween vignettes and they will be available as the deal of the day on the Sunday. Um, they are absolutely stunning. They are so much fun. Um, I'm just looking over to the edge because I've got my demos, um, a couple of them made already and they're just, just sitting there. If you do want a sneaky peek at some of the vignettes and things like that that we will be releasing um, at a special price uh, on the Sunday for that that's some that deal of the day hop on over to my Instagram uh, which is at Hannah Roxbury because um, I've been releasing a few little sneaky peeks over there as well and I know the team have uh, created some really lovely card samples as well which we'll be sharing on social media over the coming days as well um Little, so <laughs> I know lots and lots of people have been asking. I don't know how much I'm allowed to give away. I've probably given away way too much than what I was supposed to, but uh, we will be popping up a list of the dies that we will be using. Um, so get those at the ready. 
craft along with us and hopefully you'll be enjoying lots and lots of spooky inspiration uh, on Sunday. So Sunday the 17th of October, um, demonstrations at nine, at one and at five o'clock, uh, obviously UK time that is. Um, and yeah, I'll be showing more, more little sneaky peeks over on my Instagram page too. I think I've put it on my Facebook page as well. So you can probably find it there as well. Um, but it's just a little bit of fun. It's just something to celebrate the, the upcoming Halloween season. And it means by doing them as um, vignettes, obviously, if you've already got the dies, you are good to go. You can start crafting away straight away with them too. Uh, lots of people looking forward to Sunday so that's fantastic thank you guys that's really sweet um keep a look out for more sneaky peeks on the um on the pages on the social pages we'll be releasing information to groups as well um oh Anne says it's my birthday on Halloween and it's one of those milestone birthdays oh Anne well congratulations and happy birthday uh, for your upcoming uh, birthday too um I'm trying to think I'm back on Create and Craft on Thursday with the Christmas celebration stamps so these are stamp sets to go with and match the designs of uh, glow of Christmas and around the tree so we'll be demonstrating some stamping techniques on Thursday I think the times are half past 10 and 5 15 um and then myself and Carla will be back at the end of next week yeah, the end of next week with a new diet launch as well. So there's lots and lots coming up, lots of exciting things as well. Uh, we'll upload this video afterwards so you can watch it back at any time. And just remember, I'd love to see your makes. So just post them up in the crafters group as we go along. I'll pop a photo up of the card as well for anyone that wants a close look at the card to then be able to replicate it yourself. Don't forget, we've got co completely open angel policy at Carnation Crafts. So you're welcome to copy the design and things like that, should you wish to. Anyway, thank you guys for joining me this afternoon. I'm going to go back and crack on with some more Halloween demos and stay tuned to our feeds for lots more spooky information. See you later guys. Bye.